Next, in step seven, it's time to move on and actually write code in JavaScript. Here, you'll create some skeleton code to set things up related to the user interface and of course, accessing the webcam stream. In this section, the code you're about to see will be copied over what currently exists in script.js. As before, I'll walk you through it first before you copy it over, so sit back and enjoy the walkthrough to ensure you understand what each part of code does. Now, the first few lines define a bunch of constants that reference key HTML document elements that you'll need to manipulate or use later on. The first is the video element that will ultimately render the video stream from your webcam once it becomes available. The second is the live view container, which if you remember, was just a div element that contained the button and the video. The third is the section element that had the ID of demos. And finally, you have a reference to the clickable button that will actually enable the webcam stream and later also start the detection process. Next, you'll define a function called get user media supported. This will check if the web browser you're using supports accessing the webcam. Now, most modern web browsers do, but just in case someone is on an out of date system, it's good to check for the existence of a feature before you try to use it, so you can fail gracefully with an appropriate error message if it wasn't supported. All this function does is to check if the navigator browser object has a media devices property exposed along with the get user media function. If it does, then you're good to go. Note the use of the double exclamation mark, which forces casting the result of the check to a Boolean value, which is then returned instead of accidentally returning something like undefined if something wasn't present. Moving on, you can now use the function just created to check if the browser supports accessing the webcam. If the function call returns true, you can add a click event listener to the enable webcam button, which when clicked will call the enable cam function that's defined at the very end of this slide. If it returns false, you can simply print a warning to the console to help debug what went wrong. Next, you can flesh out the code for the enable cam function that was previously empty. The first thing to check is if the Coco SSD model has finished loading. If the model variable is undefined, you know that the model is not available to use yet. In this instance, you return right away without executing any of the rest of the code below. This means until the model has loaded, the button will effectively do nothing when clicked. If the model variable was available when the button was clicked, then execution of the code can continue. In this instance, you can now hide the button using the CSS class named remove, which will essentially use the CSS property display none to remove the button from the view once activated. This prevents the user clicking the button multiple times, duplicating work that only needs to be done once. Next, you can construct a constraints object that will be used when using get user media. This is a special object that you can pass to the get user media browser function that allows you to define what you would like returned from the camera. In this case, you're only interested in the video stream. You do not need audio, which if left on by default would create a rather annoying echo if you were speaking. You can now pass this constraints object to the navigator.mediadevices.getUserMedia function. As this function is asynchronous, meaning it will take some time to fill the request, you can use the then keyword to await for a promise to resolve, which will then call a function of your choice once the camera stream is ready to be used. Here, an anonymous inline function has been used for simplicity that takes one parameter as an argument called stream, that is the resulting camera stream it will be called with when ready. Once the function is called with the resulting stream object, you can set your HTML video element source object property to be equal to the stream you just obtained. The HTML video element will take a small amount of time to set itself up, so you also need to add an event listener for loaded data on the video element itself, which will call a function called predict webcam once the video is actually playing correctly on the web page. If you do not wait for this to play correctly and directly call predict webcam, the first few frames of video will not contain any data, which can cause issues when trying to use your TensorFlow.js model on an empty image frame that's essentially undefined. Finally, you can add an empty predict webcam function that you'll fill out the code for in the next section, but essentially it will allow you to test without errors for now to check that the webcam stream is working correctly. You can also create a global model variable, which you can set to be true for the purposes of allowing our button to work. By doing this, you can pretend that the machine learning model has loaded already. 
And you can also set the demo section class to remove the invisible class it has assigned by default. So it appears ungrade immediately for the purposes of testing right now. The code on this slide will be replaced in the next section, but this just allows us to test the current code without any issues. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video whilst you copy over the code you just learned about in step seven into script.js as shown here. Take note that when you copy the enable webcam function from the code lab further down the page, you should paste that over the placeholder function that will already exist with the same name at the end of your existing code from the prior code block that you copied. I'll wait for you to do that and I'll see you in just a second. Great, so now you should be able to test your webcam stream. Click the enable webcam button and note that if it's your first time using Glitch, the web browser will ask you if you want to allow access to your camera. You must select allow, else the code will be denied access to the camera itself. Once you've clicked allow, you should then see a live video of yourself rendered below the text section as shown, except you should see yourself and not me. All right, so feel free to try that out and then you'll head on to the final section where you actually add the machine learning model and use it.